Dziękuję. Well, good morning and welcome to worship. You can say good morning back. It's so, let's try it again. Good morning. good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Katie. I'm the pastor here at Grace United Methodist Church. We are so glad you've come to join us in person or online. A special welcome to everyone joining us on Facebook. If you are joining us via the web, we'd love to know that you're here. Please comment in the section below and just let us know that you're joining us. I'm going to invite everyone, as you are able, to please stand and let's call one another to worship. When we pass through the waters, God is there with us. When we suffer and feel helpless, God is there with us. When we are joyful and celebratory, God is there with us. When we feel triumphant, or defeated. God is with us always. Come, let us worship together with Emmanuel, God with us.
seated. As we come to God in this time of worship, our hearts turn to this time of prayer where we can come with our honest selves before a God who loves us and knows us deeply. And so I'm going to invite you in this time of prayer. It is both sung and spoken. So anywhere you see bold text, I invite you to join along. Let us go to God in prayer. Creator of the universe, we stand amazed at your power and glory. We are eager to worship you and offer our praise, but we are often reluctant to answer when we hear you calling our name. We sing our songs of tribute in the sanctuary, but we shy away from the river, lest we be baptized with the fire of the Holy Spirit Forgive us when we forget your promise to be with us always, O oh God. Renew us with the power of your ever-present love and strengthen us to proclaim your justice throughout the world. O oh God, you who are always doing a new thing, we confess that we sometimes close windows against the fresh air of new ideas, against the noise of other people's worries, against the winds of change. God of every place and time, we confess that we often draw the curtains against people who are different against world news or community concerns, forgive us. Our, ice, our insulation in our locked homes, our shuttered churches, and the security systems of our hearts. Open up our lives and let your spirit blow through. Holy God, we come to you in prayer for those far away and those close to home, for those in India and everywhere who are still struggling with the realities and the pain of this global pandemic, for those in Israel and Palestine who want peace so desperately when all is falling apart. But God, we also pray for our community here, for University City, for Skinker Developer, for all that call St. Louis their home. As we continue to struggle with the realities of being a segregated town, of being a place that is still divided in many ways, but we are not without hope. For we know, Holy God, that you are able to unite 
even the most separate of people, that your love is powerful enough to overcome what seems impossible, and that your miracles are never far away. And so we take this moment now, God, in the silence of our heart to name those things in our lives that feel beyond your touch. Those people that we love, those situations that are a burden on our heart today, we silently name to you. And we ask, Holy God, that your spirit come into these difficult places and bring your peace. And so in confidence, we pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. join me as we affirm our faith together for we are a cloth of diverse colors made from many gifts and graces we are the people flowing forth from creator god surprising ourselves with the things which can be done we are raw material for rewarding relationships as our lives interweave contributing one to the another holding each other firm when one is weak or breaking. We are each worthy of being respected and cared for, essential to the pattern, skilled in our appointed tasks, sources of laughter and sharers of tears. We commit ourselves to the work together, that one day this world may be a place where all people live in justice freedom and peace. Let us sing together.
Our scripture this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 43. But now, God's message. The God who made you in the first place, Jacob. The one who got you started, Israel. Do not be afraid, for I've redeemed you. I've called your name. You are mine. And when you are in over your head, I will be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it will not be a dead end. Because I am God, your personal God, the Holy of Israel, your Savior. I paid a huge price for you. All of Egypt, with rich Cush and Seba thrown in, that's how much you mean to me. That's how much I love you. I'll sell off the whole world to get you back. Trade the creation just for you. So do not be afraid. I am with you. This is what God says. The God who builds a road right through the ocean, who carves a path through pounding waves, the God who summons horses and chariots and armies. They lie down and they can't get up. They're snuffed out like candles. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. I am about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Do you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through the desert, rivers in the badlands. Wild animals will say thank you because I provide water in the desert, rivers through the sun-baked earth, drinking water for the people I choose, the people I made especially for myself, a people custom made to praise me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. 
。阿门。I hear it causing trouble, Broderick. You want me to turn the mic off? Are we okay? I'll turn it off. There we go. Because it wouldn't be Sunday if something didn't go wrong, right? <laughs> I'm going to take a little creative license this morning, and I'm going to ask for your grace. The sermon turned into be quite a wrestling match this week, and after I just worked it and I worked it, I finally just surrendered and said, I'm going to share what's on my heart and pray that Jesus will fix the rest. So this morning, I want to share with you what has become a love letter from your pastor. Dear Grace Church, sometimes when emotions are strong and love is deep, it can be difficult to find the right words to say to express all that is welled up inside of you. So let me begin by saying how much I absolutely adore being your pastor. These past few months have asked so much from you and you have borne it with courage and love. It is one thing to ask a church to walk with a pastor through a global pandemic to leave their sanctuary, and to remain faithful to their mission. It's quite another thing to do all of that and enter into conversations about a merger. All of this takes great trust and faith, and you have poured out both in abundance. Two years ago, none of this was on our radar. And yet, as we emerge from this journey, and prepare to take steps into a new future, there is nowhere else I would rather be. God's spirit is here, and you have shown me that time and time again. As I reflect on our journey the past few months, reopening our sanctuary, entering into this deep relationship with University United Methodist Church, dreaming and wrestling with our future, I have learned so much from you. And I admit it may sound unusual for you to hear this confession since part of my call as pastor is to both teach and guide. But a good leader is also an avid learner and listener. And throughout this experience, you have shown me spirit-filled wisdom and truth. Many times in scripture, the church is referred to as the body of Christ, signifying the variety of gifts and talents needed for the kingdom to work. Just as each part of the body is necessary and not always seen, so the church is filled with countless unnamed saints who steadily and faithfully bring the love of Jesus to the tasks at hand. These past few months have shown me the power and blessing that this imagery holds. Let me be the first to say there is no way our church would be here today without each of you. It took a lot of people giving what they are really good at. And not just our lawyers or our choir members, those parts of the church family that are more visible at times, but it's been the unseen disciples. You who are listeners and problem solvers and dreamers and trust builders. I believe the reason we are facing our future with strength and hope is because we are blessed with a diversity of voices who have been part of these conversations. Every question, Every suggestion, every unique story and experience has helped shape the story of grace to one that reflects the true picture of the kingdom, the body of Christ where every color, age, gender, and story is valued and uplifted. Each of you have played a part in our outcome, whatever this afternoon's vote on a merger may hold. It is our differences and our diversity that has brought us this far, and I believe will be our greatest strength moving forward. 
and into the future we will go. There have been moments in this process where I feel like we have been chasing God's spirit, and other times when God's spirit has been pushing us like a stubborn child away from their favorite toy. While the unknown of the future can be a source of anxiety, you have shown me once again that we do not lean into the future with fear, but with faith. The stronger we commit to the vision and dream, the more we lean into the goodness of God, the more hope and excitement I find in my soul. I know as we journey this path that there will be bumps and stumbles. No one travels the road perfectly and it would be easy to give up at the first sign of frustration or mistakes. But throughout all of this, you have demonstrated to me the power of forgiveness. I have forgotten things. I have said the wrong things. I have made mistakes. I have been human more times than I would like. And you have loved me and you have loved others who have done the same. To reopen a sanctuary, to vote on a merger, and to still like each other at the end of it is a testimony to the love of Jesus that is the foundation of our church family. Because of your patience in me, I have discovered a new level of care and understanding in myself to give to others. Yes, we have made mistakes, but they did not derail us from the vision. We focused on God and what could be, and not ourselves and where we stumbled. Which comes to this afternoon, and a major decision lying before us. It's the culmination of months of work and meetings and prayers, and we come to this decision from a very strong and prosperous past. And I think the saints of this church would be proud of what we have done. We have drawn on our strength and our inspiration from the very courage and sacrifice that those saints had made before us. But we do not allow ourselves to be stuck in their story. We proudly invest in the things that last as we courageously continue to build our future. And just as the roots of a mighty tree go deep into the soil, we too will continue to dive deeper into the love and transforming power of Jesus Christ. And with that nourishment, our branches can stretch wide, wide enough to hold our Skinker de Oliver community, our school partnerships, our neighbors at Washington University and all of the gifts and graces that you have brought to this moment. The gifts of listening and trust and compassion and courage. Those gifts will be like the flowers on our tree, bringing beauty and hope to all who see it. Grace Church, beloved of God, you have done so well in this time. And I know that you will continue to demonstrate this wisdom as we move forward. The hope and love that is in my heart feels like I can almost burst from joy. For like the Apostle Paul wrote in our scriptures, I truly thank my God every time I think of you. And so to close, I share once again the prayer that has guided every meeting, every conversation, every spirit-filled moment these past few months. The words have become more precious to me every time they are uttered. Will you join me as we pray them now? All embracing God of the past, we give you thanks for all the people of these churches who have gone before us, saints and sinners like us, who have nurtured each other, fed the hungry, visited the sick, and reached out to the world in your name. We lift them up to you, O oh God, as we express our gratitude for their work, 
their good stewardship and the rich heritage they have left us. All embracing God of our present, we give you thanks for each person who calls university or grace their church home. Grant that we might, even in this time of transition, find grace to nurture each other as we seek to be good stewards of your church. Between cherishing the traditions of a secure past and embracing the yet unfamiliar practices that will be our future. Grant us grace in our disagreements and in our uncertainty. Grant us wisdom to understand that the vision we seek is nothing less than your own plan for us. Grant us patience to let the vision unfold as we pray and study and work together. Grant us courage to begin new things. Grant us a joyful spirit so that this church might reflect your glory and goodness in our community. All embracing God of the future, we give you thanks for tomorrow. As you lure us into the unknown, keep us secure in the knowledge that whatever the future holds, you will be there waiting for us. And all of God's people said, Amen. In response, I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing together. a reminder email is being sent to your inbox with all the information you need for voting at the church conference this afternoon because let's be honest we've got too many zoom links in our email box anyway so I wanted to put one right at the top 
It's going to begin at 4.30. If you are a member of the church, you use the Zoom link. If you get stuck at all or concerned, just call the church office. If you get a voicemail, hang up and call again. We want to make sure that you get through so you can have your vote on the merger tonight. You should have received all those documents. If you still need a paper copy, we have some at both doors. But whatever happens at 437 tonight, when we announce the end of this vote, it'll be more like 445. Just know that the saints are cheering you on, that you have been good and faithful servants in this difficult time, but this is just the beginning. And our work is ahead of us because there are so many people who need to know that they are loved, that they are treasured, that they are respected, and that they can be part of this family that is so full of love. So church, let's get to work because Monday is a new day. And all of God's people said, Amen. If I could just have your attention for just one minute, um, this is a, an historic day in our church and one that we'll remember <coughs> forever. But it's also a special day because we have special leadership that is just terrific. And Pastor Katie, I understand, is a year older today. And so I would join, ask you to join me in celebrating with her as we say happy birthday. My dad called me this morning and he said, what do you want for your birthday? I said, I want to merge two churches. He said, okay. <laughs> Thank you, church.